So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting the rabbit in the keelson. Um, usually the bevels between the keelson and the outer keel become the rabbit, but at a certain point the rabbit comes up through the keelson. So what we have on our lines drawing, we have our rabbit line, which is this outer section, this line you got here going out. And we also have our bearding line uh, tied into the other bevels, which is the inner section, the inner line for the rabbit. To do it all with power tools is nearly impossible. There's always a wander, you know, like I, if I started a, a rabbit with a rabbiting power plane, eventually I would miss the mark or I would go one direction or the other. Maybe there's a couple guys in the world who can do it and good for them, but I don't like to take those kind of chances with, you know, we spent a year looking for that piece of wood, so, you know, and it wasn't cheap, so I don't want to mess it up. So I, I usually, uh, I bring my fids in and get the angle proper, and I'll start all that work by chunking out sections with a chisel, you know, just a, a basic chisel. You know, I've got some nice Japanese chisels that I use for that kind of stuff, because they hold an edge really well, you know, until you drop on the concrete. And, <laughs> but uh, I, I'll take out a section, you know, two inches here, move three inches, and, and start that curve, and then I'll connect the dots. And then it's a very rough section that's cut out close to where I need it to be, and I can finish it with a power plane most of the time. So what we're doing here is we're putting we're attaching, we're, we're getting ready to attach the keel to the keel center. Tell you what, I'm sweating like a hostage. Well, it's, you know, you gotta kinda use the force, you know? <laughs> okay. You both got water. Yeah, you're, you're awesome. In order to bolt the two keel and keelson together, we had pre-drilled all the holes. We had to put the keel in place and continue the hole through the keelson into the keel we were using a barefoot augers, which don't wander. A lot of times if you have a screw on the bottom of your, your auger bit, that will grab some grain and it'll go off to one direction or the other. So we use the barefoot augers because they don't wander. But when you do that, you have to get your first drilling. It has to be perfect. Oh my God, that was Dead in center. Nice job. Anytime we start a real big restoration like Tulsa Queen or, or others that we've done in the past, you know, oftentimes we add people, trusted people, to our core group. And we don't bring those people on lightly. And in this case, we brought on Chet Kaysen and his team. We gotta find another strap this size. I don't wanna wrap it. They're trusted shipwrights that can work well with our group and, and work with Clark in the, the decision-making process of how to, to you know, take care of the bottom of this boat. And they've been an immense help in being able to make sure that the boat is progressing um, in light of all the other things that we as a company still do, which is maintain an entire fleet of, of classic wooden yachts that we've restored in the past. We put 5200 on the keel and the keelson. We slathered both sides. We, you know, we wanted to make sure there was enough that we had good squeeze out, even if we have to come back and clean it up or cut it off later. I'd rather use too much than not enough because this is what's keeping everything waterproof. So, the bane of the ship builder's ex ex existence are uh, Torito worms. These right here, you can see them right here. Usually they're not a problem in northern waters, like uh, 
Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York. Uh, once you get past uh, down into the Carolinas, um, you can run into some problems with these. These are, or they're called chip worms. Um, Torito worms, uh, there's also another little creature called ribbles, and they just love to eat wood. They love to, uh, to eat your boat. So uh, hopefully, um, in a lot of situations, the bottom paint is relatively toxic so that keeps them from eating that that's also why on boats like this we use a worm shoe so, this is called purple heart uh, it's a South American hardwood South American South and Central American very dense very very heavy uh, this is gonna be our worm shoe basically it's a sacrificial piece that we put on the bottom and the worms will bore into that rather than the actual structural timbers and the planking, things like that. But uh, it's also good to have something good and dense because oftentimes if you, if the boat runs aground, that's what gets destroyed. And it's hard to hurt Purple Heart, it's so dense. What I'm doing right now is I'm spreading dolphinite, a mixture of dolphinite and red lead paint to bed the worm shoe to the keel. We want toxic stuff in there. That's, that's the barrier between that worm shoe, which is the sacrificial piece that the worms will bite into and dig into. And between that, we've got something toxic in there. They don't like tar, they don't like red lead, so they won't bore through that into the boat. So if the, if the boat's ever down south in the Bahamas, Florida, uh, they can, yeah, Bahamas, you can run aground. I mean, it's a shallow draft boat, but you can run aground in the Bahamas pretty much anywhere. And if there's worms there, they'll only attack the worm shoe because they won't want to make that transition through that red lead. Once it was all bolted together and we tightened all the bolts, and then we retightened all the bolts and wait for squeeze out, retighten them again, and then it came time to lift it up into position. So we had, it was an all hands on deck kind of thing. You gotta back up just a little bit. What's that? Back up just a little bit. Stop there, come on up. We had three engine hoists, one at uh, the aft end, two in the middle, and we had our forklift at the front end. We had uh, pre-drilled and, and screwed in some, some eye hooks so that we had some solid attachment points because the, the thing weighs about 6,000 pounds. Come up a little bit. Come up a little bit more. We got it, got it up, got it up, and then we, you know, check everything to make sure everything's still safe. Make sure those eye hooks aren't pulling out of the wood. Um, make sure everything is stable and hooked in and locked in. And do it slow. Be careful. We had a guy at each hoist. We had Jeff on the forklift, and actually it went really smoothly. Big day, big day for the Coastal Queen to get her new keel. For the first time, we have some legitimate structure back in Coastal Queen. We spent a lot of time getting the boat hung so that we could remove the interior structure from the boat. And now we're seeing that all come back together. <laughs> starting to look like a boat again you know now that uh, the keel is connected to the stem and at the back end it's now connected again to the rudder post and the horn timber and it's its backbone is whole again